you need to keep your insulin low. This is how you can improve your insulin sensitivity. 48% more insulin sensitive. One of the biggest contributors to insulin resistance is a poor diet. The overconsumption of carbs is the reason why so many people are insulin resistant. Am I the most insulin sensitive person on planet Earth? It's debatable, but I'm certainly one of them. And in this video, I'll teach you how you can join the party. The journey to become the most insulin sensitive person who's ever lived has led me to discover a lot about how to reverse insulin resistance. The number one most important indicator of diabetes health is your insulin sensitivity, which means how efficiently and effectively your body uses insulin. In this video, I'm going to teach you about four ways to naturally boost your insulin sensitivity. For reference, I am 2,100% more insulin sensitive than your typical type one eating a low carb diet. I eat approximately 700 grams of carbohydrates per day and use a physiologically normal amount of insulin. Just so you understand that discrepancy, published research shows that low carb eaters who consume 30 grams of carbs per day require 30 units of total insulin. On the other hand, all consume over 700 grams of carbohydrates per day and require less total insulin, approximately 27 units per day. This shows that my body is very insulin sensitive because it's using that insulin very efficiently. If that sounds crazy to you, you're in the right place. I like being crazy because being normal is pretty terrible when it comes to diabetes health. Today, I'm going to teach you how I have achieved these results consistently for over 18 years. And these are all things that you can do as well. Back when I was in college, I tried eating a low carbohydrate diet. At first, it felt like it was working. I was eating only 30 grams of carbohydrate per day and my total insulin use was coming down. I thought, hey, this is working. I must be doing something right. But I didn't feel that great physically. Actually, I felt pretty terrible. I felt tired all the time. I had no energy and I even blacked out a few times. I knew something was wrong. And in hindsight, I now know that my insulin sensitivity was terrible. I started seeking out more information about my body, nutrition, and diabetes, and discovered two important things. Number one, that the body's primary and preferred source of energy is carbohydrates. And number two, that taking less insulin does not mean you are more insulin sensitive or healthier. What I realized is that insulin is not like other medications where you want to take as little as possible. Insulin is a hormone that healthy people's bodies make for them. So the goal as a person living with type one diabetes is not to not need any insulin, but rather to need only what a non-diabetic person's body would need. If you're living with type two diabetes or any other form of diabetes, you can find out how much insulin your body is still producing on its own via a C-peptide test. Once I realized this, my goal was no longer to take as little insulin as possible, but instead to help my body be able to use insulin as effectively as possible, AKA to be as insulin sensitive as possible. I started reading, researching, and going through my own trial and error to find the best methods for boosting insulin sensitivity and have since been able to see firsthand the same experience in thousands of clients that have been through the Mastering Diabetes Coaching Program. Here's what I've learned. Number one, reducing fat intake to under 15% of daily calories. Most people get mixed up and think that they need to reduce their carbohydrate intake to improve their diabetes health. But we found that the best results for improving insulin sensitivity actually come from reducing fat. For our clients, we encourage a low fat diet consisting of mostly or completely plant-based foods. And that's what I've personally been doing for almost 20 years with great results. The reason this works 
is because when you eat too much fat, the excess gets stored in your cells and blocks the insulin from doing its job of transporting glucose into those cells. When you eat a lower fat diet, it enables your body to process carbohydrates more effectively and therefore protects against high blood glucose. Multiple studies have documented this exact process from the 1960s to today. And published in 2024, I personally worked with a group of researchers on a randomized clinical trial. In the study, the low-fat group decreased their insulin requirements by 28%, and they improved their insulin sensitivity by 127%, all without any limit on total carbohydrates. It's really sad to me that so many people make carbohydrates the bad guy when they aren't. I'm not saying that processed carbs soaked in fat like donuts are healthy, but low fat, high carb foods like mangoes, potatoes, and brown rice are actually ideal for diabetes health and they will help you boost your insulin sensitivity. If being able to eat large amounts of mangoes is music to your ears, keep watching because I have three more ways for you to achieve legendary insulin sensitivity. Now, you might not love exercise as much as you love mangoes, but I still bet that the next tip is going to feel like good news and is something you can easily put into practice. Tool number two for boosting insulin sensitivity is exercise, specifically zone two exercise, the kind where you can feel your body working, but you can still hold a conversation while you're doing it. The great thing about this is that it doesn't have to be high intensity interval workout training or something you don't enjoy. Almost any way that you have fun moving your body can be zone two exercise. Whether that is pickleball, doing a Zumba class, rollerblading, or going for a light run on the beach with a friend. The reason why zone two training is so powerful for increasing insulin sensitivity is because it's the single most effective way to increase glucose transporters for your muscle cells. Glucose transporters are like doors into the muscle cell. When you exercise at a zone two level, you add more doors for more glucose to get into the muscle cells, which lowers your body's insulin needs. And zone two exercise is a gift that just keeps on giving. Studies have shown that even after you finish exercising, your muscle cells continue to have those extra doors and are more efficient in taking in glucose from the bloodstream for literally days after the exercise. It's worth it to move your body. Find a form of exercise that is fun for you and ideally that you can do with friends too, so that you can do it consistently and enjoy your life at the same time. Funny enough, the exact opposite of exercise is also great for insulin sensitivity. If you don't like exercise, maybe sleep is more your thing. And that is perfect because that is also an easy and effective way to boost insulin sensitivity. Sleep helps your body to regulate glucose metabolism and stay in a healthy, overall hormonal balance. This directly affects insulin sensitivity on a nightly basis. And over time, it affects other related issues like weight, inflammation, and appetite, creating even more influence on your insulin sensitivity. Over the past 50 years, the average amount of sleep we get has decreased by one and a half to two hours. And this is by choice. It's easy to think that it's not a big deal to miss a few hours of sleep. And I definitely used to fall into that category myself. But studies have shown that sleep restrictions, such as getting about five hours of sleep over the course of one week, reduce participants' insulin sensitivity by an average of 20%. And even just a single night of sleep has been shown to reduce insulin sensitivity by 20 to 25%. Since learning more about how sleep impacts insulin sensitivity, I've become much more mindful about making sure I get at least seven hours each night. And while all of the typical sleep hygiene tactics you hear about, like reducing your exposure to blue light before going to bed and sleeping with the room at a colder temperature are real, there's one thing that I don't often hear brought to the conversation. One very, very highly effective thing. The thing I'm referring to 
is why I try to finish my last meal of the day by 5 p.m. And that thing is intermittent fasting. Not only do you get higher quality sleep when you stop eating a few hours before you go to bed, but you also improve your insulin sensitivity at the same time. I love efficiency and productivity. So I love it when I can do one thing and get multiple benefits from it. If you haven't heard of it before, intermittent fasting refers to an eating pattern that includes periods of fasting in which you do not consume any food for a period of time, such as a 16-8 formula where you fast for 16 hours and eat for eight hours each day. Here's why intermittent fasting works. When you are fasting, your insulin levels naturally drop because you're not eating anything. So you don't need any insulin for food. When your cells get that rest period, they end up being more insulin sensitive once you do begin eating again. Think of it like noise. If you're exposed to loud noise all day, you might start tuning it out. Similarly, if your cells are exposed to insulin all the time, they can start tuning it out. They'll tune out insulin signal, leading to insulin resistance. The opposite effect happens when things are silent and then you hear a noise. You are much more likely to notice it and have a bigger response like being startled. And again, the same is true with insulin. Your cells will be more sensitive to insulin when it comes after a rest period. Fasting can be done in many ways, but some are often unsustainable and can backfire if the fast makes you so hungry and irritable that you overeat on the other side or reach for high calorie comfort foods. The 16-8 style fasting that I described earlier has been shown in studies to be effective for improving insulin sensitivity, even in the absence of any reduction of overall calorie intake. So we recommend starting there. To sum up everything I've been talking about today, insulin is not the enemy. Insulin is a natural hormone that every non-diabetic person's body makes. The goal is not to use as little insulin as possible, but rather to make your body as insulin sensitive as possible, AKA to become as efficient as possible at using insulin. Insulin resistance is the root issue in complications from diabetes, and that is the actual disease process that leads to other chronic issues and worsening health over time. Insulin sensitivity is the opposite. If you focus on insulin sensitivity, you improve your health and help your body to thrive long-term. And today, I taught you four key ways to naturally boost your insulin sensitivity that you can implement starting right now. Number one, reduce your fat intake to under 15% of your daily calories. This happens easily if you eat a plant-based diet that is centered on whole foods like fruits, starchy vegetables, legumes, intact whole grains, non-starchy vegetables, and greens. Number two, zone two exercise. Find something you enjoy doing that involves movement. Do it with a friend and do it often. Number three, sleep seven to eight hours each night. Number four, and keep your daily eating within an eight hour window, allowing your body to fast for 16 hours in between. In my experience, changing my diet was the number one most effective and powerful thing I've done to boost my insulin sensitivity. And so many other benefits came from that single change. If you want a copy of our free foolproof guide for eating to have the best insulin sensitivity of your life, click the link in the notes below to get a copy. It has 16 pages of expert advice, scientific research, and easy recipes to make food feel simple and straightforward. Thanks for watching today. If this was helpful, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe so you can get more tips from me and my co-founder Cyrus to revolutionize your diabetes health.